All right, we've got through all the theme parks up here on the Gold Coast. Three parks in three days. It must be suicidal. Everyone's just tired, worn out. It's so hot, <laughs> but it's done. And I must admit now my mind space is turned a little bit um, about the trips coming in front of us. So if you've been following, you know, we're gonna do Fraser Island and uh, Land Cruiser Mountain Park soon. This COVID thing is becoming an issue. Um, if you're watching this in the future, uh, this is I think the 3rd of January and um, just in the last couple of days, uh, there's been some issues in New South Wales. Uh, they've, people are shutting borders to New South Wales. Can't get up, can't get back. Adelaide's, uh, well there's locking borders. It looks like we can't go through New South Wales to get back. Um, we're not planning on getting back until Australia Day. So hopefully everything fixes itself. But if it doesn't, we're gonna have to go via, well we can't go through New South Wales to get home. So we'll have to probably go through Birdsville uh, and go around that way. We're just gonna add heaps of kilometers. And I must admit, I haven't really set my caravan up for that kind of travel. Um, there's a few things I was getting ready for this prep. We went and had the van service. It was such a rush with the car. I kind of overlooked some things with the van. So um, I know like the third water tank that I put in years ago i've started building new brackets for that and i've made like one out of three i should really be fixing that and um knowing that there would be some dust on those roads like the jacos are not great for dust sealing um so i either have to like think about how i'm going to tape the whole van up or work out a way that i could positively pressurize it like cut a hole in the roof and put a snorkel head on it or something like that so I'm just thinking about that sort of stuff. Um, speaking of caravan things as well, I bought a new gadget. You might be able to see it on the awning here. I'll excuse my laundry <laughs> hanging out. But this is really cool when we're talking about um, water and what we're gonna do on Fraser Island. I'll turn the camera and show you. took the washing down because Shane would kill me. Hey Sam. Hi. So, by the way, this is our clothesline that sits there permanently under here nothing too fancy but what I want to show you is these gutter mounts so we've created a gutter at the end of our awning and so what these little jobbies are let's see if I can get one out these clips look like that basically you just like roll them around two hands makes it much easier and they sit in the gutter like so now space them closer at the front or on the downhill side and less as you get towards the end because you end up getting more water in it and then this creates a gutter and goes into this bucket and then <laughs> through this hose comes around and then into our tank so yeah we've been basically running we've got mains water here but we've been running on rainwater because we've had a bit of rain lately and um, it just collects it. So eBay, I bought this from Rain Saver Gutter. Pretty cool product. I like this one, it's a pretty cool product. And I think when we're on Fraser, um, it'll give us less anxiety about water usage, uh, <laughs> as long as we've got a bit of rain. I'm having a bit of a chuckle because I've installed this new gutter system thing on the caravan and started pissing down with rain. Sharon's been having a go at me going, oh, this thing's not working, this is not working. And then it started raining just as she was having a shower. It's like, I can't swap off mains water onto the new gutter channel rainwater collection device because she's mid shower. So I waited for her to finish. I've gone out, I got absolutely saturated. It's working, it's working so well that the bucket has overfilled and all this is going into my tanks right now. So the setup, it's working. <laughs> and I'm really wet. I'm happy and wet. Weird, eh?
Yeah. Also, I think we should have a bit of a chat about a post that's been <laughs> smashed around Facebook the last few days. Um, so we parked up at, uh, where were we? Wet and Wild. Um, I don't know why, we left the car park space in between us. And, no, hang on, let me show you the post. So this has totally blown up. Um, on the Y62 Patrol Modified Action page. And then I think even someone dumped it on the Y62 Owners page. It's been on the Land Cruiser pages. Uh, it's now the thumbnail for the um, Y62 LC200 Battle page. It's just gone, I don't know, not viral, runny nose. Um, but I think I should explain what happened. So we all parked up at Wet n Wild and there was a space between us because our cars are so big that if you put two patrols next to each other, when you open the door, you're going to smack into each other. So I thought I'd leave a space. And we parked up at the front row, came back at the end of the day. And yeah, this um, Land Cruiser 200 series was parked in the middle. So in the photo, that was a Land Cruiser 200. It wasn't a Hilux or anything like people have been saying. It wasn't photoshopped. It was, uh, and none of us parked there took the photo. Someone else um, took the photo, a Y62 owner, uh, and posted it. So like, we didn't set that up or anything. And uh, I met the, the guy at the end of the day, he was actually leaving the same time as me, and we had to get in the car one at a time uh, so we could get out. But not photoshopped, these things are just massive, uh, especially like when you've got four inch lift 37s, wide flares, uh, it does belittle pretty much anything that parks next to it. Anyway, go have a look on the pages if you want to see that. I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on how the solar is going and with the Victron system here too. Like it's a reasonably overcast day. There's a lot of tree cover around the place. And as you might've seen in previous videos, it went for a 48 volt panel. I'll show you how that's performing in this condition. So we'll go into my favorite little apps here. This is the DCS battery. We'll um, just refresh this. Oh, it's sitting on 100% now, um, but still saying from here it's taking 11 amps in. That's minus whatever else has been consumed in the car. If I get rid of that app and go to, this is all my Victron apps I've got now. Go into the smart solar one, that'll connect up. And we can see at the top here, the voltage is 30 volts that I'm getting through at the moment. Uh, at 30 volts, it's 4.7 amps. When the Victron solar regulator steps that down to 13.9 volts, it equates to 10.2 amps. This is where I think the system is paying off because like in these conditions, I'm getting like 10 plus amps still going into the battery and my, my um, lithium battery, battery, the start battery is fully charged. It's cranking actually. So I'm going for the full Gold Coast experience doing everything I think there is to do out here. Uh, at this uh, aqua park behind us. Don't bother going to the gym, just go spend 50 minutes on this and you're knackered. But um, makes me think, for this trip, battery is pretty much sorted. Um, you know, we'll take food and all that sort of thing. Really, the, the limiting factor is gonna be water. Uh, I think I've got that nailed with um, if it rains, but I can't help thinking like, what have I forgotten? I've never been to Fraser before. Uh, I haven't really gone off grid for like more than four or five days. Probably four days is my maximum. So I'm wondering what else I have to consider. Uh, any tips, leave it uh, in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm just gonna blindly go into it like I usually do things. <laughs> so as I'm driving around thinking about this, I think it's just really doing a shakedown of everything that's in the van and car grabbing everything, see if it rattles, see if it can get shaken loose. Um, just to mind the inverter, I don't think that was bolted down properly. I'm just gonna go through the whole van and just bolt, check the screws, because I think it's about to get a, a hammering. That's probably the best thing I can do. It is getting a tad late in the day, 
but I'm still keen to uh, just like do a bit of a shakedown or at least at le tonight assess what needs to be done so I can get it done tomorrow because then the next day we're off we're going to Fraser uh, so I've <laughs> just sent Sharon off to see if she can find some pool noodles and maybe we can strap up any piping um, and I don't know what else gaffer tape just stock up on that sort of stuff uh, so we're just gonna have um, we're just cooking dinner too a bit of uh, pork belly now salted up nicely oh sorry camera's a bit warm these changing topics sorry about this I'm not a massive fan of these things I much prefer the uh, Weber Q I think you can slow cook if there's such a thing better with them these tend to run a little bit hot uh, but what I've worked out is if you put a can in between the lid you can sort of keep it at about 120 degrees the only problem is I don't think one can is enough so we're gonna get another five well we've got five full cans we're probably gonna find a way to empty them and then load them up around the outside just to make sure there's enough gap in the lid I'll let you know how it goes slightly distracted by food but let's get back into this and see what we have to do to get this van uh, a bit more bush ready yes I should have done this before the trip but I just haven't had a chance even like quick walk around we notice this like, I don't know what that does but anyway we're gonna screw that back in I'm gonna go around the entire van and have a look at every nut bolt shred everything have a look at everything underneath it was serviced although they didn't pick that up they're probably not supposed to um, this tank has always been a bit of a worry of mine um, when I did the install the straps weren't long enough and I'm like oh I'll go and make some extended ones three years later I made one but I really should have more so I think just for this trip and I know it's like going to be a duns better than perfect but I'm just going to ratchet a strap through here just to get it I don't know just a bit of double up effect the plumbing's my other issue um, which is on the other side. So I'm gonna just have a squeeze around at the plumbing and see what needs to be done. Got all the tools out, but I think, I think I'm gonna call it. It's getting late in the day. We've assessed what needs to be done. I've um, strapped the tank up, I'll show you that. So that, that part of it's done. Uh, there's a few things inside I need to sort out like the inverter which I bought last minute, need to screw that down. But probably more exciting though, is I've just heard, and I've, I've left this out of my vlogs up till now because I didn't think it was gonna happen with all this COVID stuff. But um, George Offroad Tavern has made it to Queensland. I don't know how he's done it. He's somehow got through the border, like he's Victorian, driven right through New South Wales. He left last night and I just got a message that he's in Queensland. No, I saw it on Facebook, yeah. So he's here. And then, so he's at Gundawindi tonight. He's gonna be meeting us here tomorrow night, I believe. So he's done a stellar job getting here. Wait till you see his car when it gets here. He's pimped it up, put a supercharger on it. He's like double decked what it, his rooftop tent and all sorts of other stuff. Anyway, he'll be a bit of a laugh, a bit of a laugh. Um, look forward to seeing him tomorrow. I'm gonna fix up the rest of the van and basically tomorrow is stocking up, loose ends and then, and go. This is like, this is the bit that we're like waiting for, the exciting bit. We're meeting all the other Queensland crew up here, the big cars, we're getting on the barge. Like this, is like, yeah. It's about to get exciting. So I'm going to sign off for tonight and we will see you again, probably tomorrow, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.